We had a thorough discussion on how we can restore the tree balance after insertions. And remember, we got four cases there. Case number one, left rotation. Case number two, right rotation. Case number three, left-right rotations, double rotations. And case number four, right-left uh, double rotations. So these are the four cases you have to make sure you review before you continue with the current part of the lecture. Luckily, to really restore the balance after deletions, the procedure will be mostly the same. We still have to do the so-called trinode restructuring, which we have been discussing. The trinode mean, uh, means that we have to identify A, B, and C. And the way we identify A, B, and C in the case of insertion is rather straightforward. You simply just uh, find the first unbalanced node along the ancestor path, and then find the, its child and also its grandchild nodes. That's what basically what you did for uh, the insertion case. But for the deletion, the way we choose B and C will be a little bit different. We have to uh, elaborate on the details of choosing the child and also grandchild. You have to pay attention to that detail. But we're going to do exercises together after we actually go over some general principle in this part. Let's now do that. First of all, I want you to recall the details about deletion from uh, a binary insert tree. And this is kind of a, like a very quick recap about what we ended up having for deletion uh, from a binary insert tree. We're going to remove a node, let's say the node exists, with 0 or 1 internal child nodes. It's a very important insight to actually recall. Let me just show to uh, show to you two uh, pages over here. You can definitely review the detail which we covered in the previous lecture when we, uh, when we talk about the basic operations over BST. You can first of all go back to this particular slide from the last lecture. So that's really the sketch of the BST operation for deletion, right? Very briefly. For case number two and also for case number three. So these are the two cases we actually have to handle. For case number four, after we have replaced the node by uh, the small, uh, the largest value that's actually smaller than that, right? That's uh, what we spoke about earlier. And it will still be boiled down into either case number two or case number three. So you can think about ultimately, whenever you want to do deletion from the binary search tree, you will only have to handle case two or case three for the actual removal. That's something uh, I want you to recall, number one. Number two, if you actually go back to the iPad notes, let me show to you from earlier. Let me just uh, make it even more visual to repeat the point I just made. Let's say we got case number two over here, and the node that we want to remove is this particular node, and it has two external uh, child nodes over here. In that case, after removing this node, you can think about this external node that's actually there, is one of the child nodes over here of the node that's being removed. That's the case number two. And for case number three, we wanted to remove, let's say this particular node that has only one internal child node over here. So after removing this particular node, this internal child node will be connected to the removals, uh, the remove nodes parents over here. So this node here is internal and this node over here is the external, right? So these are the two explicit cases. What about case number four? For case number four, we can either boil down into case number two, in which case we want to remove this node, and we or we can boil down into case number three, in which case we want to remove this particular node for which it has an internal child, right? You can see it's really about case number two or case number three that has to be executed ultimately. So these are the two pages I want you to review very carefully before you move on to talk about how we can do rotations. It's actually quite important. They're connected. They are really just different pieces of the same story. Let me go back over here. Let's now go over the general principle about how we can perform rotations. You will find that most of the details are the same. The only part that's different is about how we choose the trinodes. The way we choose A will be the same. It's simply just the first node that becomes unbalanced along the ancestor path of the node, of the nodes, uh, of the child node of the node that's being removed. Uh, you will see the slides. And then the B and C will be chosen a little bit differently. Let's take a look. So after deleting an existing node, so if you ended up in case number one, uh, in which case you didn't delete any node, in that case, of course, the tree is not changed and no rotation will be needed. After you remove a node, and let's say the child node of the removed node, it's very important to, uh, to see that, right? For example, let's say over here, if you actually ended up in case number two, in that case, the child node of the remove node will be this one over here. That means it will be the starting point uh, to actually check if there's any unbalanced node along the ancestor path 
On the other hand, if you ended up executing a case number three, the child node of the remove node will be this node over here, right? You can see you kind of remove this node over here, and this is the child node of the remove node, which will be connected to the original node's parents. In that case, this will be the node starting from which you should really look up its ancestor path to see if it's uh, to see if there's any node that has become unbalanced. Right. So these are the two cases I want to emphasize. Right. So let's say that particular child node either being external or internal is simply just n. Okay. And then so if all the nodes along n's, uh, n's ancestor path remain um, uh, remain balanced, should we do anything? No. No rotations. Then we are lucky. Nothing. The tree remain balanced. And starting from case number two, if there's at least one node along the ancestor path becomes unbalanced, in that case, we're going to do something similar to what we did for uh, insertions. Let's take a look. Well, you still want to find the first or the lowest unbalanced node along the ancestor path, and let's call that A. So this part here is identical to how we did it for the insertion case. Here, when we choose the B, rather than simply choosing A's child on the ancestor path, now we're going to choose the taller node, the taller child, B. And there is a mathematical property. Usually, uh, if you want to choose the taller child of, uh, of A, it's not going to be on the ancestor path. It's a property, but we don't uh, need to prove it uh, for this course. You can just take it as a fact. Okay, let me just mention that to you. And again, when the way you choose the B is not simply just choose uh, A's child on the ancestor path. Rather, you're actually going to choose the taller child of A. And mathematically, it's not going to be on the ancestor path. You will uh, we'll see that when we do the example. I will remark that again. What about C? And the way you choose the third note, uh, the lowest note for, uh, for the rotation. The way you choose it, you're still going to choose a child node of B. However, if uh, B actually got left child and right child, which child should you actually choose? Let me give you the principle first. And uh, if the child nodes actually got different heights, in this case, you got a taller child. The same principle as number two over here, how we chose B, right? Or if they have the same heights, in that case, you're actually going to choose the child so that A, B, and C will slant the same way. Just remember the principles, and then I'm going to illustrate to you by examples. And then, how do you perform the uh, rotations? The way you, uh, once you choose the A, B, and C, the way you perform the rotations will be identical to how we did it for insertion. If all the three nodes slant the same way, only a single rotation will be needed. If, all, if they all slant to the left, a right rotation will be needed. If they all slant to the right, a left rotation will be needed. What if they slant different ways? In that case, you will need a double rotation, how, like how we judge for the case of insertion. And what uh, what's really new about handling the restoration of the uh, tree balance is you may have to continue applying the case number two over here, meaning that you may have to do more than one uh, trinal restructuring process. You may have to do. Remember, in the case of insertion, we we do either of the uh, single rotations or either of the double rotations. But in the case of deletion, you may have to do multiple single rotations or multiple double rotations. You have to judge. Okay, so let's now go over the principle here. As we find any unbalanced ancestor after even the current rotation, we have to keep applying case number two, which means we have to go over case number two again to choose A, B, and C and do the corresponding rotation. We may have to do this in the worst case, do this all the way up to the root of the tree. That's may, uh, that may be what we have to do. Consequently, in the worst case, how many rotations do we have to do? Well, since we start, we may actually start a rotation after the deletion, maybe from the bottom of the tree, and we have to keep doing rotations all the way until the top of the root whenever necessary. So in that case, the number of rotations we have to do should be corresponding to the height of the tree. However, we're talking about now a balanced binary search tree to really perform the rotation with. In that case, the height of the balance binary search tree should be log n, right? That's the minimum case that we're talking about. Just remember, even though we have may have broken some uh, high balance property of some node from the deletion, but the tree overall globally is still relatively balanced. So that's why when we try to keep doing uh, rotations all the way uh, up to the root to restore the balance, the number of rotation we have to do will still be very corresponding to log n. It's a very important intuition I want you to gain just from the general principle.